We have a special surprise here for you. You know that I'm a collector of a number of um, espionage tape recorders and espionage microphones. Well, I have a kit here from different suppliers of uh, espionage equipment. And I've got a tape recorder and a camera, flash unit, film, earphone, lapel mic, um, fountain pen microphone, remote control, telephone tapping device, an inch counter for reading maps, distances on maps, and a few extra indexmatic, indexmatic tapes. So let's just take a look at some of this. So we'll start over here with the uh, tape recorder. This tape recorder is produced in the 60s, 70s, 80s by Stutzi, S-T-U-Z-Z-I, -Z -Z and it made in Austria. It's a very nice little tape recorder. It uses these cassette type cartridges. You can see the tape. It uses the same size tape as a cassette tape does, modern cassette tape. But this one has a very special function. It has an indexing devi uh, uh, device that tracks the time of, uh, relative time of the tape. This happens to be a 70-minute tape. It's two 35-minute sides and the MT570. And uh, so the, the 70 is the 70 minutes. So each side has an indexing, uh, number indexing to uh, be able to track the audio. The interesting thing of play and record on the memo cord made by the Stutzi uh, K70 is that you push in on the tape to fast forward and rewind, or forward and rewind. And rewind, you can see the numbers advancing there. So um, we'll listen to something that's on this tape. Okay, I haven't listened to the entirety of this tape, but obviously it has something to do with a construction project. Don't know if it was from Austria or just what. Okay, here we have an, a, a 90, a 905, a 90-minute tape. And um, interesting, the, the nomenclature 2 by 35, which is 70, 2 by 45, which is... 05. I'm not sure where they came up with their numbering scheme, but this is obviously a 90 minute tape. And uh, let's see what's on this one. All right, don't have any idea what that is. Tissot. Source rocks. I'm not sure what that means. And there was a switch here to hold it, uh, to lock it, and also to hold it. There's volume controls here for playback and volume control for record. And then there's an external mic and a remote control. In playback, in playback, this becomes external audio, and in record, it becomes a microphone. So um, you can see it was a very compact little tape recorder and very well made. Had some plastic and metal. Let's take a look at the battery compartment. uses three AA batteries. There's the uh, microphone. 
and speaker. I believe they may be, they believe this is a combination speaker and microphone. You see the tires that drive the tape. Okay, so we'll put it back together. There we go. And uh, I wonder what's on another tape here. We'll try it and see if there's anything on there. Okay, I have no idea what that's all about. Haven't listened to them at length. Nothing there. Okay, so we'll do a real quick little record right here just so you can hear it record. So we're going to hold this in and then push the play. And we're now recording on the memo cord K70. Let's see, uh, we've got the volume turned down pretty low on record. Let's turn the record volume all the way up to nine. And uh, we may get some motor noise as we record on this uh, because we're using the built-in microphone. We'll try it again here in just a moment with an external mic. We'll try it again with the external microphone. So uh, this came with the fountain pen microphone that you would put in your pocket, and then the cord would slip through and up and over and into your down your shirt sleeve. And this is a Sennheiser microphone, which is a top-of-the-line microphone, as you probably are aware. It's a very expensive uh, microphone company. So let's try... Um, you can hear it works as a speaker and a microphone. There we go. So you can use it as a previewer. And uh, so let's just record right on top of that. Okay, now we're recording on the Sennheiser fountain pen microphone plugged into the memo cord K70. And uh, this was made, also made in uh, Germany. Uh, all the tape recorders made in Austria. The uh, microphone is made in Germany. And I'm about 8 to 10 inches away from the microphone as I record. Okay, let's rewind. And play. Wow. Okay. 
So we've tried the Sennheiser fountain pen mic. Let's try the lapel microphone. See what how it sounds. Okay, it's also working as a speaker. Alrighty, we're now recording on the lapel microphone with the memo cord K70 and the lapel mic is also German made and um, which is the neighbor of Aust Austria, of course. But uh, so I don't know whether these came as a, as a separate uh, accessory or if they were purchased all together. But let's test and see what quality we're getting with the lapel microphone. Okay, so very, very hot microphone would do a very good job in a noisy environment for sure. So the recording functionality of the of the memo cord is just outstanding. Very pleased with the recording capability. The, the switch, the uh, remote switch is was provided by Sony and um, it just simply simply powers the the unit in the remote jack so we can illustrate that um, let's put it on play rewind first of all oh it's turned off okay rewind okay and then play lock play That's the switch you would hide in your pocket, and then when you were ready to record your, uh, have a recording session, and uh, a secret recording session, you would um, use that in your pocket and turn the unit on and off. The uh, headphone, interesting setup here. Uh, obviously, the headphone is not original to this kit. Uh, this is a diesel. And I've seen Diesel manufacture other earbuds. It's a clearly uh, a European-made earbud, but it came with an adapter because this doesn't fit the the jack for um, the K70. So we'll plug the adapter into the earplug or into the adapter into the tape recorder. Excuse me. And we probably will be able to hear this. Also German made, and um, which is the neighbor of Aust Austria, of course. Okay, but, so. Uh, so I don't know whether these came as a, as a separate. So it works really well, really well, the, the earbud. Let's put that back in here. Let's see. Okay, then we have the telephone. Um, pickup, magnetic pickup for the telephone. It comes in its own little box and it had a, a broken wire. I think someone bought a separate pickup. It's got the suction cup on it. You can see there and it uh, it sucked, uh, it, it adheres to the, the headset and then you can record um, your telephone conversations. So those are the tapes and the tape recorder oh, let's get this back in here in the right direction here we go so that's the micro cord stutzy uh, uh memo cord k70 then uh we have the maps inch inch counter and this is also made in germany as you can see here and this was used to draw to you would align uh, zero the um, 
the device and then walk this across this little knob right here. You walk this across the map and measure in inches or feet, depending on how you are reading this, this gauge. And, or you could do a conversion. If you were using eight scale, quarter scale or half scale, you would uh, ride this back and ride this around and measure uh, the instruction sheet that came with the inch counter is says that it's a precision device so very interesting western germany and uh, the instructions on how to use it for exact measuring of distances on maps of all classes and nautical charts etc etc so the instruction sheet came with the inch counter for reading maps distances so that leaves us with the recording device and the map counter, the inch counter. So now we're going to look at the camera. This is a Minox camera or Minox camera. It has a measuring um, chain here that has uh, distances marked off with a little bead. You see the bead right there? This is the 8 inch bead right here and then 10 inch, 12 inch, and I think up to 24 or 20 inch, 20 inches. So you would use this to, to measure the distance between the documents that you were trying to steal with your camera or photograph with your camera. And you would hold this bead up against the document and you would um, pull the camera back that distance. And you would set that distance here on the camera. So you had um, the distance set right here from 8 inches, actually slightly less than 8 inches, all the way up to infinity, 6 feet and beyond. And you would set the distance of your shot right there. Then it had a film count, how many counts of uh, photographs you had on the film that you had, you had either had taken, yeah, had taken, of the film and we're going to show you the little film roll here in a second but you would open the camera look through the viewfinder and that's the viewfinder and then here's the shutter and there is a, actually a um, light meter so you would press the button and adjust the light I'm going to turn this towards the light and I want you to see the meter change I'll, uh, there's down dark and now it's up light you can see how it changes and then it locks that position and you can then adjust the speed of the, the shutter by turning this knob and adjusting to compensate for the light. And once you were ready to take your picture, you would, I don't know if you can hear that or not, that's ready and it would click. You also had two filters, a clear, a green filter, and a dark gray filter for extra bright photography. So those filters were, some of you photographers probably know what how those um, filters would work. So it's a pretty simple little camera. This is the Minox B, and uh, which was the second generation it has a flash attachment, and we're going to look at that in just a moment, that snaps right on top. But let's open it up. There's no film. There is film in the camera, but the film is consumed. So we're going to open it all the way up, and we're going to pull the little cartridge out, and there it is. See how tiny it is? And there are companies that will still um, develop this film, and you can still buy this film for the Minox because apparently it's still wildly popular. So that was the uh, the film cartridges. Interestingly enough, I have a package of brand new 100 exposure film, two, two little film cartridges in here that have never been opened. You can see the seal has never been broken. The paper strap has never been opened. And it's ASA 20. And look at the date code on there. 
February 1962. So that gives you a, a, an, an idea of the age of the camera. And this is the flash attachment. Came in a nice little leather case. And the flash attachment runs off of a 15 volt battery. Now you would put an A6 bulb, and I have some A6 bulbs. Some of you uh, photography buffs know what an A6 bulb is. It's a single flash bulb, and it would snap in there, and then you would push this up, and it would be the reflector for the flash. And then this whole thing, there's the connector. This whole thing just sets right in on to the camera, just like that, and plugs in. So you still have your light meter exposed so you can see. And then you could take your pictures like this or side or panoramic or, or I mean, uh, uh, portrait or landscape. And when you would push the button, it would trigger the flash. So we're going to take a look at the inside of the flash. Let me get this back off. There we go. The flash opens by pushing in this little bead and pulling it apart just like that. Inside you'll find a 15 volt 15 volt battery and I have one of these batteries on order. It's a very unusual battery. It's about a 35 millimeter length battery and inside underneath this piece of paper right here is a capacitor 100 microfarad capacitor. So the battery charges that cap and it discharges through the flash bulb and the bulb explodes internally and flashes and it's a one use flash bulb of course so you would buy a back a box of a6 flash bulbs and you'd be good to go for all your photography so it all folds back up and when you pull this thing this open this up there's a little tab right here in the top that allows you to put the, the bulb in and it connects electrically right there and then when you're done um, you just simply close the uh, screen and that little tab comes up and pops the bulb right out of the right out of the camera and right out of the flash attachment and you're ready to put another cam another flash bulb in and uh, the unit is charged and ready to go for the next flash. So there's the cute little leather, German made, made in Germany, as you can see. And that's the flash attachment for the Minox. So I'm very privileged to own a Minox camera. If you will remember TV shows like Hogan's Heroes, they would always have this little camera that they would do this, they would do this, take a picture, this, take a picture this take a picture of the papers that they were taking a picture of and stealing information from Colonel Klink and the Germans so uh, I'm wondering if they used made in Germany I wonder if they used German made camera to steal German secrets uh, interesting question but in any case that's the uh, the little German Minox camera and it is a jewel. So I'm going to get that film that I just showed you. I'm going to get that film developed. There's a guy that will develop that film. And we're going to uh, get it developed and see what's on there. I have no idea how many exposures. This might be 50 exposures per. Yeah, they are. They are. 2 times 50, it says. 2 times 50 is 100. And AFN, AUAF, AUFN probably German for what exposure maybe I don't know what that well they said 100 exposures there but I don't know what that is interestingly enough it's very low ASA extremely low which requires a lot of light but it's super high resolution super high resolution for um, taking and I'm not going to open this up it's too pretty to disturb I can still buy film for this camera and when I get film I'm going to mail this cartridge off and I'm going to at the same time I'm going to order a, a roll of film for this camera. By then I'll have the battery and flash bulbs for the um, flash attachment and we'll do a little bit. Uh, we'll talk about the the 
we'll take some pictures with the flash attachment and maybe by then I'll have the pictures back that whatever's on this reel, uh, this roll of film, I have no idea what's on there, but it'll be fun to discover that together. So send me your comments and questions. I know we just kind of breeze through this video a little bit, but I know uh, I, I'm just crazy about espionage equipment. And I thought you might get a kick out of this particular setup using tape, um, audio tape cartridges that I have never, I don't have any tape recorders that use these uh, cartridges. So it's a great privilege to have a player recorder that will um, use these. I have two more cartridges right here. I'll probably set them right in here somewhere. So I've got them all together. But that's the memo cord cassette for the memo cord K70 tape recorder. Enjoy this video. I just have to show you this shirt. This shirt that I got for Christmas. <laughs> Pretty appropriate considering what we just saw on the on the uh, vintage uh, technology espionage technology. Again, thanks for watching, and I always appreciate you guys. I get comments on and offline and and it means a lot to me. So uh, please make some comments and, and questions and add your insight into this camera technology particularly. I'd be interested to know what you think about that.